everybody. Hope y'all are having a good one. Got the Ecto back up and going. Uh, it's been kind of just sitting off to the side for a while. Uh, I had taken the transmission out for uh, another project. So hasn't been getting much attention here lately, but uh, that is changing quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, if you'd seen a couple of my previous videos here recently, uh, I've taken a set of 2-2 uh, ruptures and did a little cut and shut job. You can see my horrible glue line on there. Uh, I took about a half inch of height out of them, um, but they're still full width. <laughs> Um, I tried, tried these out on the Gapra and they crawled really well, like way better than expected. Um, but my plan originally was to, uh, throw them on this thing for some trail tires for the events coming up, uh, this spring and summer, you know, beat the Creek and the gauntlet and all, all the things. So, uh, I threw a three gear trans that I had just sitting around and a castle system in here. It's a Copperhead 10, 2280 KV motor. And I can't remember if that three gear is out of uh, 10 2. That might be the one out of the race or if it's from my. Uh, OG SCX10 but nevertheless um, I'd run these tires on the Gapra they did great so I wanted to get them off of the plastic beadlock wheels and get them on some metal beadlocks which are these goofy looking things here they look way better um, got a little bit more weight in them so this thing should be quite stable but um ran into a couple little issues and uh had to make a compromise just to get out here on this pretty chilly but nice day uh just to give these things a good test run um the offset is such that i need to uh get these things pushed out further than uh, I would normally like to. Um, the rear is not so much of an issue, but I've got some uh, hex wideners on the rear with the sleeved wheel nuts. Um, so right now the rear is actually wider than the front, but I it's gonna come down to, I think I'm gonna have to just uh, Kind of waller out the the hole in the center where the uh, wheel nut goes um i cannot get a eight millimeter nut driver in these wheel nut holes and if i could get an eight mil in there then i could use another set of hexes and nuts that i have and that should give me the perfect offset and it wouldn't be stupid wide with a whole bunch of wheel scrub but like i said today's a nice day i wanted to get out here so compromises were made so before i get comments about the wheelbase and the offset and the whatnot i just wanted to explain myself um it's easier to explain these things while talking instead of trying to text it out so this is not how it's going to be when I call it quote unquote done. But this is what I had to do to get it out here to uh, see how this thing does on these tires. And as far as the tires go, the tires and the rims are good. But I'm going to need to uh, get some more 
uh, foams here so that I can uh, kind of fill these things out a little better. They're super, super soft and they're going to roll over and kind of slide side to side. Um, you know, I, I don't know of anybody that makes a foam or insert that will just plop right in here and be perfect. So I've got to make my own. Don't have the stuff to do it at the moment, but I'll get it. So it's going to be a little wonky, but it'll be all right. We'll get through it. And the whole point of all this is after doing a little bit of a test run the other day with these tires and um, this motor and transmission I actually had in another rig. Um, it was my parts bin Cabra. And I had a 24 tooth pinion gear on there. I wanted that thing to have some wheel speed because I was running through mud with some fling kings. I put all that in here. So I was out here just tinkering around. Wasn't expecting hardly anything out of this thing, especially with that pinion gear being so big. And the performance blew my mind, even with the giant pinion and no low speed control. I mean, it still had it, but not as good as it could be. So, uh, I dropped down to a, I think this is a 15 tooth pinion. So I'll probably still end up going smaller than this even, but I just wanted to kind of take some baby steps and see how big of a pinion I can get away with because for the trail runs and stuff, it's nice to have some wheel speed. So this isn't going to be super slow crawl like I got a fusion in here, but I'm going to go out on a limb and uh, say that I think the king of the pit has returned. If this thing keeps doing as good as I think it's going to do, we're going to start having some head-to-head -head matchups and uh, we're going to start putting this thing up against the four-wheel steer rigs. Um, you'll see. We're going to run up a couple of the uh, harder lines that I got out here at the moment. And if you've seen my videos at all here within the last six months or so, um, you've seen all of the other rigs at points, not all the time, but at certain points, struggle and sometimes fail getting up these. And those rigs are way more capable on paper than this thing should be. So if it keeps it up, I think we've, uh, I think we might have to pass the crown back to the Ecto, but we'll see. Today's a trial run. Like I said, nothing on here is set up exactly how I'm gonna want it to be. So we're just kind of testing the waters here. Just wanted to explain that before we got into it. So kick back, relax, enjoy the ride, and uh, let's welcome the king back to the pit. I'm just gonna go out on a limb with after seeing that right there and say that this thing is potentially grabbing and climbing at least as good as it ever has, if not better. Modifying these two two ruptures and making them shorter has just completely blown my mind at how much better they've gotten performance wise. So we're just gonna cut straight to the chase and only hit the hardest spots. Uh, try to keep this video from being an hour long. I know they've been pretty lengthy here lately. So we'll try to try to keep it 
somewhat short. I also didn't clean up any of the leaves, so it may take a minute to uh, clear a path out. It's just, it blows my mind. I mean, this, the Ecto was the first rig that I had that could ever make this line right here that you just saw. And even back when it could do it, you know, on the regular basis, when it was set up to be, you know, in crawl mode, um, it was still somewhat of a battle. And now, like, I just, I don't understand uh, the logic in tires this wide and how they're biting so good. Because, you know, the rig still weighs the same as it does on normal, you know, one nines even. So you'd figure spreading out your weight you know, on a much bigger contact patch with tires that are not as soft and sticky as the crawlers are. They're still good, don't get me wrong, but they're just uh, not quite as soft and sticky. But the fact that your weight's spread out on a much larger contact patch, I would think that would mean less bite but somehow that's not the case. This one really blew me away uh, yesterday or whenever it was when I came out here to try it because it didn't, couldn't quite make the normal line that I take with the four wheel steer rigs, but then it took a line that is a serious battle to make with the four wheel steer rigs and it, pretty well walked right up it so we'll see if I can do that again extra bit of weight in the wheels wasn't a good idea for something this vertical. something to do with the fact that it's a good bit wider in the rear end now my uh, with this extra wheelbase it's not able to keep the rear tires up on that chunk of concrete that the front driver's side tires 
hovering over right now. Cause it was it, it was keeping both rear tires up on that chunk there, and it walked right up this thing. And uh, even the Gapra on the ruptures that it runs on a regular basis has a real difficult time making that line right there. I may actually throw a clip in of this thing doing it the other day with the, uh, the other beadlocks in a narrower wheelbase just to prove my point basically um, it is a vertical uh, video but I think I'll press that in here in a second I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to get this now with that wider track width in the rear yep. still did it but not uh, not near as easily as it did the other day it pretty well just walked right up this the other day but still nevertheless this this incline right here um, I don't know if I'll be able to get it to stop and not roll over where I want it to here, but, nope. Ooh. That was a rough little tumble there. However, this incline right here. It was 74 or 76, or maybe that was the other one and this was 78. Either way, mid 70 degree angle right here, that is hard for any rig to get up, especially being all off camber and slippery and all the, all the things, you know the things. So, check out this clip here of this thing walking it yesterday. blows my mind how easy this thing is grabbing onto things that my four-wheel steer rigs have problems with and this thing is not even in what I would consider crawler mode I mean hell it's Aside from the Wraith, I think this thing has got the most wheel speed at the moment of any of my rigs. And the least amount of turning angle. That's not crawler mode. And it is just beasting these things. Now, I'm not saying that they're the most difficult obstacles in the world. But as far as what I have out here and 
how capable my other rigs are and how well this thing is doing in comparison especially for how it's set up this is bonkers i mean i i made it up this the other day and i very very rarely even attempt to take anything up this particular obstacle because just depending on the day i mean literally i could bring the same rig out here one day and it will climb up this and bring that same rig back out the next day with the same setup be the same temperature the same everything and completely different traction this is just one of those weird obstacles that when i first built it it was uh it was fun but it turned into a nightmare so i'm not gonna guarantee that it's gonna make it up this today because i didn't think it was gonna make it up yesterday but it ended up doing it but i guess we'll just keep uh keep this clip rolling since it's already going and see what happens yeah keep sliding off to the side really gonna get interesting once I uh well, I can't say once I get up there but if I get up to the, where that tree is uh this thing being wider in the rear now it might not even be able to make that turn It's just crazy. I don't understand how these tires work as well as they do. Definitely rubbing on everything. That's just crazy. So just for kicks, because the rear end's wider and it's got a little bit more weight down low, we're gonna try this again. Um, this is, at least the top of the tree over there is one climb that I have not been able to make with anything, especially not when I don't get lined up properly. But um, absolutely none of my rigs have ever been able to make it all the way in the notch of that tree. And uh, that's something that I've wanted to uh, get done for a while now. I don't know what. I'm not standing in my normal spot. I'm not sure why I'm not getting getting this up on here. Huh. 
Okay. We'll cheat, I guess, and go up at a goofy angle, maybe. Now my tire is really bound up. Okay. Anyways, that first little section there is not the point of this. This spot right here, this crazy vertical off camber goofy transition on bark. That is the goal and the point of this climb i have zero hopes of this thing making it but i've got to uh got to give it a shot because so far it's seemed to be the one that made it the furthest and at this point it's a game of millimeters we've got both tires coming off so Luckily, there's a little uh, level on my phone here. I'm trying to show you how vertical this thing really is. That is up there. I wasn't there to catch it, but I wanted to show you how vertical it actually got there. One of these days, I will make that climb. When I do, then I'll actually turn this into an obstacle and build something off the end of it. But nevertheless, that wasn't really, you know, part of the... Uh, this whole test here that was more curiosity on my part than anything goodness gracious that tree's hitting me in the face everywhere i go nevertheless i just cannot get over how well these tires are doing For as ridiculously wide as they are, I feel like they have no right to be this good. I mean, this thing looks like a freaking monster truck. Yet, it grabs like a damn crawler. And it's not like these are super feathered in or anything. They have maybe three, four whole battery packs at the most that I've run on these. And the first one when they were full size was absolutely just disappointing as shit. They did not do worth nothing when they were full 2-2 size. Whatever the hype is when they're new 2-2s five five or five six something i don't know one of these days i'll uh look at the other set and see exactly how tall they are when they're new but at 5.1 inches tall these things are doing fantastic so we'll wrap this one up i've been rambling a bunch here and i just wanted to run through uh some of the harder obstacles that I got here just to kind of have a benchmark where this thing's at in its current configuration because uh, it should only get better um, and if that continues to be the case we're going to start uh, having some brawl matches in the pit and uh, I think this this spring here we're going to crown a new official king of the pit, which has always been the Ecto's title um, until I started building four-wheel steer rigs. And then I just 
kind of turned this one into a trail truck and left it behind uh, it seems like the ecto didn't like that too much and uh, it's coming back swinging out of nowhere i did not plan for this but it's happening and uh, it should be should be pretty interesting so anyways i hope you enjoyed and uh yeah stay tuned because there's a lot more to come from this one but hope y'all have a good one we'll catch you in the next one later